Namaste everyone. Welcome to the second part of our handstand series. Today we're going to work on strong shoulders. Um, strong shoulders and actually neck, the whole um, rhomboid traps area, you need to, it really needs to be firing up to support a strong handstand. Um, actually when I first started learning handstands, my neck hurt for, for years. And now it's strong and, and it can hold my whole entire body. So I want to give you, I want to cut a few corners and hopefully we can um, eliminate some of that pain and get into some strength and flexibility work in the shoulders. I often say to people, I can give you all the tools to learn a handstand, but I can't teach you how not to be scared. But the one thing is, if you're strong and confident in your shoulders, it goes a long way to eliminating fear. Because I really believe when you're doing your handstand, your strong shoulders will stop you. But if you don't have the strength in your shoulders, that fear is all about feeling like you're going to crack your head into a wall or stumble and fall. But we're going to get these super strong today and then we're going to not eliminate some of that fear involved with doing the handstand. So the way we are going to start is just with some shoulder stretches. These are my favorite. This is happy puppy pose. So I'm going to bring my hands out and keep my bottom in line with the knees and come onto my forehead. If you are not so flexible, you might stay on your forehead. As you get more flexible, you might be able to tilt your tailbone up and get your chin and chest to the ground. But don't crunch your shoulders. You want to feel softness. You want to feel the arm bone lift into the shoulder joint, but you don't want to feel crunched around the neck. You want to feel space. Take five breaths here. I grip my mat to pull back. And then from here, coming onto all fours, rounding the back. This is your angry cat pose. Good. So even in our core um, video, we did the, the tiger curls. So now we're gonna do the tiger curls. We did it then as a function of the core. Now we're doing it as a function of strengthening the shoulders. So what I want you to do is move your shoulders over your knuckles. Once your shoulders go back, your shoulders aren't switched on as much as they're over the knuckles. And we are going to lengthen that left leg back, right arm forward. And we're going to do uh, tiger curls, knee into the, into the elbow crunch and back. Crunch on the inhale, lengthen on the exhale. Five more, doing some random seven of them. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so from here, standing, staying forward, holding for a few moments, getting that shoulder activated, neck long, find that spot on the ground to gaze at so you don't have your neck up. And then down. Let's do our other side, right leg, left arm, seven curls. Shoulder over the knuckles as a function of engaging the shoulders. Three, four, five, six, seven, and hold. And down. Good. So let's come into our plank and then downward dog. Stretching the shoulders out. When I was learning the handstands, I found my shoulders. They were very weak at the beginning. They tired within minutes of practicing. So there was a relaxing pose that I had to do very often. I'm gonna show it to you now because you might need to come into it every now and then. It's called the rabbit. I'm gonna be on my knees, on the crown of my head and tuck your chin in and then interlace your fingers behind the back. Bring your arms over the head. That will release your shoulders and neck for your handstands, but it's also quite good if you're on a computer all day. So, when we do our tiger curls this time, with the left leg forward and back, we really want to emphasize stopping with our shoulders over the fingertips. And back. So we'll do five of these, but we're going to stop each time, shoulder over the fingertips. And back. Two more. 
Excellent. I promise you, after you nail the handstand, you don't need to do these tiger curls ever again. Then I, I'm not a big fan of them, but I'm going to show you why they're so important in a moment once we finish this five. So I'm going to go here and hover, get that support with my shoulders and neck and back. And then four. Three. Two. And one. Okay, so hover and back. So I promised you I'd show you why these are important. Um, and once you can nail your handstand, you won't need to do the tiger curls because the handstand will take care of this strength work. That is just one leg of version of this. See that? Hold on, I'll try it a little bit stronger. Yeah, so here, what I've been doing effectively is strengthening myself up to hold myself like this. We may not be there yet, but we're working towards. So I would like you to come back into your rabbit. I've been doing these for years, but those drills are very exhausting on the shoulders. So bring your arms over the head. So from here on in, we're going to need, uh, I've, used, I've only brought a TheraBand today, but if you've got a TheraBand, you've got to tie it a little tighter than shoulder width, so you've got resistance. If you've got a yoga belt, make it shoulder width. We're going to move from downward dog to dolphin. So I've got my thumb in front of the block and my index finger around the block, making a nail shape. I'm going to go from um, downward dog and then I'm going to roll my elbows down into dolphin and then press up and then down and then up. Three more. So you keep the neck and shoulders up. I'm going to bring my shoulders a little over the fleshy part of my forearms and two more. And one. Staying in dolphin, you can have a little bit of fun in dolphin. You can try to lift the legs. So remember I'm telling you that it's that interplay of hip and hamstring flexibility, core and shoulder strength. So if you're not flexible in your hamstrings, your handstand starts here and you're gonna be guessing where to go. As your hamstrings get more flexible and your shoulders get stronger, you'll be able to float off the ground. Putting that leg down, just working on the flexibility of the other leg. If you do have a handstand in your practice or a forearm balance, you can try and kick off the floor a little. Otherwise, just pulsing. There, good. Have a break. As I mentioned, you get tired very quickly with this practice. Come onto the crown of the head and bring the arms over. Okay, so let's get our belt again and we're going to do sort of the upside down version of the handstand just so we know our shape. I'm going to bring my hands a little bit around face height and lengthen back. Now, when I'm teaching students this, I can tell exactly what their handstand is going to be like by how they do this. If they're like this, their handstand's going to be floppy. If they're like this, they're going to struggle to kick up. So you've got to lengthen, engage the core and lengthen the tailbone back. Good. And then bring your hands down a little further. And keep stretching through the shoulders and the arms, lengthening. Make sure the tailbone doesn't stick up, especially that's a, kind of the domain of the overflexible people. You really got to, instead of overstretching, you've got to engage and get stronger. And just like we did in our last video, we're going to do our Spider-Man handstand, but we're going to be contained with the belt this time. Did you practice walking into the wall? Might not be easy with the belt, but you could give it a go. So that you are straight, I'm a little bit distant, but if you can get yourself all the way into the wall without sticking your bottom out, not that easy contained in them belt 
And now we can try a few of our handstands. So the, with the belt, it makes it easier for us to lift. So if you're not competent with handstands yet, what I want you to do is just place your hands down. They're going to be in the right position because they're belted only shoulder width apart. And just start these kicks. One, if you've got a leg you favor, use your other leg. Two, and then get used to even just jumping both feet off the ground. So it doesn't matter whether you can actually get to the wall or not. But eventually, you want to be able to lift up. And your shoulders just stop over the knuckles. This is where we don't have to be scared that we're going to hit our head against the wall. My shoulders are my stoppers now. They're nice and strong. I kick and bang. They don't go any further than beyond my knuckles. Yeah? Great. So after a lot of shoulder work, it's great to do a little bit of a release. So I'm going to cross, this is sort of like a shoelace pose, cross my left leg over my right, and then bring my right arm eagle style over the left, and lengthen and stretch forward and relax. And then the other side. Great. And maybe one more shoulder release. I do this at the, if I've done a lot of shoulder work, I'll always do a little mini shoulder stand at the end. And if you've got, if you don't do shoulder stands that much, if you want to bring your feet to the wall behind you, it's very relaxing and takes away all the tension built up. Stay as long as you like there. I'm going to take about another eight breaths. You can bring your feet over a sofa or a bed. And then very, very slowly roll down. Don't forget to release your neck. If your neck is, causes any pain, just come to the crown of your head. And yes, once again, as well as the core exercises and the shoulder strengtheners, if you're not practicing them, I say every day, but three or four times a week, um, then you, you're sort of going to miss a few steps towards nailing the handstand. So give them a go and enjoy the practice.